Hi, I'm Kelly Chase and this is History Detective and today I want to talk about World War II Russian sniper Rosa Shanina. Just a quick warning, this episode contains descriptions of sexual assault. In 1941, Rosa Shanina was a 17-year-old kindergarten teacher in the Russian city of Arkhangelsk. But by 1945, she had earned two Order of Glory medals for bravery and a Medal of Courage. She had appeared on the front page of several publications and killed 59 enemy soldiers before being shot in the chest on the battlefield at the age of 20. Many of the accounts of her life depict Rosa as this mythical yet wholesome warrior before listing her bravery medals and her confirmed kills. But what I would really like to know is, what was life like for a woman in the male-dominated Red Army during World War II? Rosa Shanina was born in April in 1924 in a small Russian farm community. Her mother was a milkmaid and her father a logger. She had five brothers and one sister. In 1931, when Rosa was about seven, the Central Committee of the Communist Party made military training compulsory for all elementary school children. This included shooting skills. It was kind of like girl guides with guns. This program had three stages. Little Octoberists, ages seven to nine, young pioneers from 10 to 14, and then the Komsomol, or Young Communist League, from 15 to 28. A lot of the future World War II Russian snipers would go through this program. At 14, because she wanted to continue on with her schooling and there was not a school nearby, she walked 200 kilometres, or 41 hours, to a train station and she eventually met up with her older brother in the city of Arkhangelsk. She ended up completing high school and continuing her military training in the Young Communist League. Then, in 1941, when she was 17, she began working in a kindergarten. That same year, one of her older brothers was killed in a battle. So Rosa joined the military training program and completed the 150 hours of marksmanship training. In 1943, she enlisted in the Red Army and attended the Central Women's Sniper School for seven months. Let me just zoom out a little and give some context about Russian women serving during World War II. The concrete numbers of how many women served in World War II is quite contested. It seems to range between 500,000 to 800,000 women. Some of the roles that they took on were pilots, scouts, commanders, gunners, doctors and nurses, mechanics and cryptographers, coding and decoding messages and, of course, snipers. Another young woman who attended the Central Women's Sniper School explained the training. The program included training in tactics, firearms, parade drill, physical deployment and politics. We had to know how to camouflage ourselves and sit in hideouts for lengthy periods. After graduating sniper school, Rosa was sent to the 3rd Belarusian Front and shortly after, Rosa's picture began appearing on the front of Russian magazines. By September 1944, stories of the Red Army Girl unseen terror of East Prussia were gracing the pages of Western newspapers. But what was it really like for a Russian woman on the front? Although it was not permitted for soldiers to keep a diary in the Red Army, Rosa Shanina did. After she was killed in battle, it was passed on to her friend, a war correspondent, who kept it and eventually published an abridged version 20 years later in 1965. Her diary highlights the emotional toil that being at the front lines takes, not just because of the horrific gore, death and killings taking place, but also the constant sexual advances from the male soldiers must have been exhausting. My heart is too cold to care. I'm cold-blooded about everything. I'm now able to kill not only Germans, but anyone I'm ordered to. Then there was the violence and gore. People all around were hit and torn to pieces. I nearly vomited at all of the body parts. In another entry, she explains her emotional state. I've been sitting, crying for the last three hours. It's midnight. Who needs me? What good am I? The reason for her weeping becomes increasingly triggered by the behaviour of men. Often she was the target of both verbal abuse and sexual abuse. Some guys throw dirty compliments at me. 
Another harrowing account was when she was attacked by a male soldier. The chief of the regiment headquarters started to harass me, being mean to me for nothing, grabbing me as if I was a prostitute. She wrote of a different soldier. He stuck close to me. Let me kiss you. He was drunk. I was in the middle of changing. He walked in without permission and wouldn't let me put my pants on. He twisted my arms around, threw me down on the couch, kissing me. I was in tears. Luckily, the colonel walked in and stopped the situation, but the soldier justified his actions by saying, I don't want German women. They're infected and you're a clean, pretty girl. That does imply that the poor German women were also suffering much abuse. On two occasions, she mentions the danger of being raped. I'm afraid of getting into trouble because some of the girls were raped, so now I don't stay overnight. These diary entries tell a very different story to the glossy propaganda photos that graced the covers of magazines and newspapers. Her experience is so much more complex than the image portrayed of a heroic female sniper fighting off Nazis and seeking vengeance for her brother's death. Yes, she was brave. Yes, she was a good sniper. But one of her biggest challenges was fending off the sexual abuse that was served up to the women who only wanted to serve their country. I will leave you with a quote from Rose's diary that sums up the battle she fought as a woman at the front. I wish I was born a boy, then no one would have paid attention to me. Don't forget to hit subscribe and if you would like to hear an original song on this topic, you'll find a link to I Spy up there. And in the description below, you'll find a link to a list of references and links to teaching resources. This is Kelly Chase on The Case. I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this video is being recorded today. I pay my respects to the elders and knowledge holders past, present and emerging.